Oh, hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm in uh, better spirits than I was yesterday, most of the day. And um, although I have a few setbacks, I'm grateful to be alive and in a beautiful area right now. I'm watching the sun come up over there. Uh, and I am really in the um, edge of the Everglades and uh, will be all day today. Anyways, um, it is good to be alive and uh, drug free and medication free and pain free. There is something to be said for that. I will tell you. Now, um, what I want to do is I, I think we'll just cover the news because I think I gypped uh, everybody out of the news yesterday. I'm not sure, but it was kind of a odd day. Um, what I want to do first is I want to tell you what makes me feel good. I'm going to show you a few different things, okay? First of all, um, world news media. Again, you know that I've, elega I've elevated him to a God status. And he is, he has figured out what the game is now it's not too terribly smart to trick americans into believing something you only have to find what it is that they've believed and have been drilled in their head their whole life so um we've got an agitator here and i know one of these uh commenters said that i'm an agitator i don't think i'm an agitator at all except i tell you that i'm god that's about as agitating it as, as it gets but i want you to look at this can i ask you a question in palestine aren't they mean to trans people we're here ut austin and trans people are out here protesting for palestine but don't palestinians throw gay people off roofs is there a game please leave yeah no i'm just gonna hang out right here can anybody tell me about do they do any pride parade <laughs> Dude, what are you going to do about it? You guys are all idiots. Yeah. You guys are transgender. Yeah. And you guys aren't even allowed to be in Palestine. Yeah. I know that you don't want to. Okay, so that's enough right there. Um, once again, because he's a god, um, or if you listen here on this channel and you emulate my behavior and my coming down on things, you will also be a god. Um, this will put you into direct conflict with the mindless idiots around you, generally speaking. I say this about the United States. I can't tell you in other countries because I lack the experience with that. It may be different. Uh, the Americans have gotten very weak in their mind as of late. So, uh, this man has figured out the game and he's put it up there. It's World News Media, a capital letter on each one. And um, maybe I'll try to leave a link here for you so that you can link to him. Folks, he was so dejected last week. He put up that thing on um, uh, Elon Musk, I think. He put something up on uh, uh, Elon Musk and he had almost no views. And folks, he's not a shocker like me. I, You know, I get out here and I got one shoe, one of my work shoes over there with my socks. Okay? That tells you everything you need to know about life for me here. But this man uh, at World uh, News Media, he has a nice format. He spends a lot of money doing it. And the most important things aside from that is that he comes down on the right side. Now, who knows? He might be watching my channel before he puts anything up, but probably not because he's smart. He's and most of the people here that come to this channel are smart. If they weren't, they wouldn't be here. They'd be again enjoying the pleasures of World of Zelda and this and that and all the other mindless garbage. So for me, I'm older and I just don't want to waste any more time. I want to help my fellow American, even though they don't want the help. Now, let's continue on. So that was the first enlightening uh, thing. And it says, World News Media uploaded Alex Stein harassing people at genocide protest. Now, let me tell you something. And this is hard for a lot of people to figure out because you can't do comparative reasoning or uh, 
it, it, it's just impossible for you. The man is making, uh, Alex Stein is making a legitimate point. I'm going to tell you very straight out that Muslims will absolutely do you in. If you want to go and you want to fuck hairy faces of men in their mouth, you, it, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. I pro You have my word of honor on that. Don't try to do that in an Arab country. Um, India is different. They And partially in India, it's because of their uh, multi-theism and all of those different religions in there. And many of the big ones um, promote the idea of um, a living God that comes up from their people or whatever it is that's blue, you know, the uh, the girl who has male features too. They have six arms. Uh, we won't even get into it. But um, the Muslims just don't play the game. They live their, their lives by a holy book, okay? And they don't bother wasting times with uh, women that have six arms and this and that. They, they just don't get into it, okay? Now, um, my friend in Moscow uh, is reminding us that there is an ex, uh, exhibition in Moscow showing all of the captured, uh, basically American and other, uh, German tanks and all the rest of it. It's because uh, the Russian people are also easily led, but at least they have somebody that is more of a straight shooter than anything we have here in the United States, I will say that. And um, the last one here, but not least, um, I actually got a rare comment, this blue, blue tan company. I told them that this was uh, propaganda. Uh, they're showing a, a tank run down here. The they're drone comes from behind and hits the tank's engine. The second hit. And that's all that's left of it. The shelling of Ukrainian positions for this tank ended just as sadly. Uh, so, are there Russian tanks being blown up? You bet there are. Uh, don't forget, they are the ones that are uh, the aggressors here. And uh, whenever you do that, you experience uh, much greater, generally speaking, you... You experience much greater uh, death among your soldiers and a greater loss of equipment. So um, the the problem here is that you know he asked me how is this propaganda um, because he has spent um, the last two and a half years or three years now uh, since this conflict began uh, watching all of the Western. Um, approved news that shows you about the great counteroffensive and how many tanks they're knocking out and surrendering Russian soldiers, which there is partial truth to. I mean, come on, folks. Of course, you're going to get scared Russian soldiers that are going to surrender at, at, in some cases. That's just war. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's reality. But what they're not showing you is if this counteroffensive went so well that they all showed you every day, and I'm not talking about just on your news, I'm talking about MSNBC, I'm talking about Microsoft Network, I'm talking about Yahoo, I'm talking about any of the cell phone companies' news. They all tell you about how swimmingly things are going, and then um, w we get the news that uh, we need to pay a lot more money because they need a lot more things because everything got blown to shit. And there is your answer, sir. I would assume that you are a sir. And um, you're welcome to get smart. The way you get smart is you go onto this channel or you go onto World News Media. And that's my friend from Canada, the last person making any sense in Canada, complete sense, where you can trust him. He knows what side to come down on when you're a god. You know how to do that. You don't. You're still buying into the propaganda garbage nonsense, which is why you go, hey, wait a minute, we had a counteroffensive. Well, how is it that we're not doing well? They showed them blowing shit apart. Oh, am I a mindless douchebag? I guess I am. 
Don't be like that. Don't be that guy. You come here and I will take care of you as a God, not like you. And uh, sometimes I get very tough about this, okay? And he asks, uh, is it Russian? Is it a Russian tank being blown up by a drone dropping a grenade? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, but like I told you, where's your great counteroffensive? Huh? Well, they were telling you, uh, aren't you going to remind me about the great counteroffensive? Where are they? Where are the raging Ukrainian tanks and M1 Abrams? Where are they? Oh, they're not around, are they? We're not going to waste any time with this. You're a mindless idiot. You come here and you'll get real smart pretty fast, depending on your gifts that God or the gods or deities have given you. So let's continue on. And I have one more to go to here. So, uh, uh, blue tard, what is that? Blue, blue, bluetin and com and co. I guess that means bluetin and company. Um, welcome. I know it's a rough welcome, but there are many friends here for you. And we're not going to try to, uh, brainwash you. Take a look for yourself. Take a look at reality, not just what they're showing you in your part of the world. Okay. Uh, another thing that made me feel really good. Um, my friend from Moscow there um, has come out and just made one word. One word, folks. He said, true. I made a video yesterday where I said, why are we building the Russian army? If you're going to send tanks to Ukraine and the Russians are going to leave them, and, and leave them to be towed away back to Russia, that's not a good investment. You're winding up building Russia's morale. You're building their military. So what's the point? You're better off not to do it if that's the case. And then this is the final one. And then we'll cut this video because it's probably about 10 minutes. And, and he's reminding me, he said, look, in, um, um, there's an exhibition of trophies, including American military equipment. And it's called Victory Park or something like that. And it's normal. That's what countries do to demoralize any other country that's trying to uh, uh, at war with them. I don't want to say attack, but they are attacking them. They blew up that Crimea bridge. So don't think the Ukrainians are not trying to attack them. Okay. And the creme de la creme comes from my good friend here. Most of you won't believe it. So I have to put this down. Um, this man has found his way through, I don't know, three of my channels, four of my channels, and stuck with me when my channels were removed by trying to somehow find it. I don't know how he did it, but uh, this is Shane. I believe his name is Shane, and um, this is really a big compliment to me, and it made my day yesterday. It says, um, sorry, folks, um, it takes me up to the top here. Um, you're a good guy, man. You're also consistent and you're willing to put yourself out there. Don't worry, it gets better. Um, willing to push the boundaries and speak your mind and not give a shit what anybody thinks. It's been the many reasons why I've been following you for so long on YouTube. Strong mind. I don't know if there's any more there. Always count on your... And your consistency. Out of over 400 subscriptions on my YouTube, there's no one like you that I'm sub to. Even my wife asks every once in a while, how's Paul from Florida doing? Anyways, keep being you. Keep making them videos and keep staying strong, man. Sub for life. Uh, folks, without getting... Uh, too emotional about this. Shane, first of all, I'm not complimenting you, okay? You know for a while, the other people don't know this, but we do share the same brain, okay? That's why I've used your video of the doll, how you torment your family with that little doll. That's just my game. So you already know that we share the same brain. So I don't want to really compliment you too much. I'll get accused of complimenting myself. 
But uh, I know where your heart is. And uh, you got a good one, my friend. Thank you. Uh, my life would kill the average man. It would kill the average man. So I do the best I can. And I feel it's my job right now and my moral duty to try to make sure people understand both sides of things. Take care. I'll be back with the news. And it's really good to be with you this morning. Off medication, not off medication. I don't go on medication. And, um, you know, walking. I did three miles last night. And I'll probably do a little bit of walking today, although it will be hot. Take care, folks. God bless all of you, my subs. I know I don't say it too much, but it sure does feel good to have you with me. Even when you give me one word on a comment, like, true. Why build Putin's army? You know what I mean? It's like, and, and just to close this out, you know, a Patton did the same thing. Uh, our great five-star general Patton. Uh, Patton was denied going into the war uh, of, of um, the invasion of Normandy because they knew uh, the Germans were expecting that he would make the charge. He would spearhead it. And it was just too um, attractive to keep him out of the war. And uh, it had nothing to do with him slapping that officer at the hospital, not the officer, uh, enlisted private. Um, he slapped one and had to make a, an apology to the hospital and everyone else uh, present and all of that. It wasn't because of that. It was because the nature of what he was was a perfect uh, con job to make the, the uh, Germans go off balance. It was really a masterful job. The, it almost failed because Normandy, the water, was so rough. And some ingenious idiot had an idea to take skirts. I'm not kidding. And take material and put it around a 30-ton tank and have them float into shore. And they tested these out in uh, bathtubs and so forth. And they worked swimmingly. And once they put them out into the ocean with four foot, five foot waves, they didn't do so good. So actually, I think it was only one of them, believe it or not, that, that even made it onto the beach. So um, the point was that I was making is that um, De Patton was desperate to get into the war after they landed the invasion of Normandy because we couldn't get onto Europe. And uh, it was killing him. It was killing him. He was a man of war. He was a ro war romantic. In fact, it wasn't unusual at all for German officers to have pictures of Patton because they respected him so much. They called, I forget what they called him, the Grey Ghost. I, I forgot what they called him, uh, but they knew exactly what Patton was. And in some ways, it was easier to defend against Patton because they knew he was a war romantic. And that was somebody who romanticizes the war and everything about it. And it's too complicated to get into. But your your behavior is predictable when you do such a thing. Now, um, the uh, what was his name? I can't remember the name. I don't know if it was Eisenhower or the other guy there. Uh, one of the big um, uh, cheese there. After Normandy, the Americans went so far in and got so far that they actually became separated from their supply lines and it led to Battle of the Bulge, which was the Ardennes Forest. And it was, um, they were they were trying, the Americans were trying to survive. I don't even want to get into it because most of you are not really capable of even understanding what they did. My dad was in it and um, he never bothered telling me this, but the Battle of the Bulge, the Germans had the, uh, completely surrounded the American forces and the only thing that saved the American forces was the fact that many of the German uh, tank battalions were 16 and 17 years old. And that's why they didn't go in. They were junior officers, if officers at all. And they just didn't know how to proceed with this because they knew the juggernaut of what the Americans were. They knew. They were afraid. They weren't all 16 and 17 years old, but many of them were, especially the tank battalions. 
and they stalled and kept offering a chance to surrender and uh, they uh, they sent a message uh, the uh, to the Germans uh, when they were given a chance to surrender there the Americans and they just put one word nuts n-u-t-s nuts and uh, he wasn't going to surrender the uh, the commander there I forgot his name now he wasn't the the, uh, the the commander. The general was not going to. Um, I don't know if it was a general. I think it was, but he wasn't going to surrender under any circumstances. And folks, what the Americans did was unbelievable. They had to get men to wheel cannons, howitzers, from three hundred and two hundred yards apart, and they had to keep moving them so that it made it look like they had a lot more uh, firepower than they actually had. It was unbelievable. When you study history, you're no longer a dick fuck, retard, douche fucking zombie. You become like me and you become a god. My subs excluded because my subs wouldn't be here unless they had some kind of knowledge of this as well. So in terms of that comment from my friend from Russia, I get it because uh, the powers that be, the military brass sat down and they wanted Patton to go and save them. And they would have had to go on in bad snow. It was around Christmas, 1944, I believe. And um, it was in the bitter cold and a lot of snow. And um, they sat Patton down and um, they, they basically told him to shut up and just listen because they knew how he was. And um, uh, Patton wanted to go in like I did to Pas de Calais, which is the closest part between England and France or the continent of Europe. That one 33 mile, uh, it wasn't even 33 miles, I don't believe. It was like 39 kilometers or something like that. It was the closest point. The Germans had all their tanks there. They knew that they were coming there. That's what uh, Patton wanted to do. And I agree with him. I would have I, I would have gone in there. That whole gambit of going into Normandy was a disaster. I, I don't even know how they did it. it. It was a complete disaster. The men were drowning before they even getting blown out of their um, uh, carrying uh, boats, uh, drowning in the water, going overboard and, and floating as target practice for the Germans, all this kind of stuff. But anyways, to close this out, um, they basically told um, a Patton to shut up and listen and they told him the mission, and they said, "Look, uh, the, 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 he, they've got uh, Monty, not Monty. That was the um, the British guy. They've got the American guy there pinned down, and then um, uh, he won't surrender." And uh, Patton said, uh, "How do you know?" He said, "Because he sent a message over to the Germans." He says, "What was the message?" And he says, "Nuts!" And, and Patton started laughing like crazy. <laughs> You see, it was so simple that he, he just started laughing like crazy. And he says, no, he says, uh, somebody that uh, is so masterful in our language has to be saved. <laughs> so my friend in Moscow, I know this is going long. Thank you so much. All right. And uh, we'll see what happens. Take care, folks. Sorry for the length of this video. We'll try to do one more. And that's it. That's all, folks. Take care. Thanks for subscribing. Give me a like if you can and uh, tell your friends so that I can uh, get to 200 subs one of these years. Bye.